Hello my soccer universe and welcome to a long overview review of what happened over the past week plus one day in England. It was really really tough to decide when I should make this review video. Uh, however my uh, rather busy schedule a little bit helped me out there and then I said okay um, Wednesday today there are no games happening in the Premier League which kind of seems like this perfect jump off we have the rounds 37 completed yes the makeup games that we had previous from previous week uh, takes a long time yes we had an FA Cup final in there but this seemed to be the perfect point uh, for a penultimate review video it's going down the wire and although Liverpool won another title over the weekend um, then their title hopes actually did slightly increase. Uh, believe it or not, uh, they actually could win the title. However, it has to be said that it's still very, very much in Manchester City's hands and I would be more than surprised if it's not Manchester City who win the Premier League title. However, you know, if it's staying all in, uh, it, it if that's all about it, then yeah. Uh, Liverpool definitely uh, are not going away that's much for sure and this is another Premier League season where one definitely can, can say uh, you might want to talk about top six but I think we have to talk about the top two Liverpool although spending not as much money as um, Manchester City did have an equally strong squad and now the squad depth on both sides is really 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 good and that makes for exciting watching uh, at least for a neutral um, and in this is a season where you barely can allow yourself to flinch but flinched at it a little bit and so it's going down the wire again like I think it was three seasons ago with Manchester City on the last day of the season with a slight advantage. However, it's also going down the wire for all the other races. Although I'm wearing Spurs, they are definitely the biggest winners over this past week. Not only disposing Arsenal, but getting another win and Arsenal dropping further points. They seem to be in the driver's seat now for this final Champions League spot. A spot where, to be honest, uh, Given the schedule, we look, we, we, we look at it. If they mess this up, this would be the most Spursy thing of all Spursy things out there. Um, and all, it also goes down to the wire for relegation, where uh, Everton twice missed the chance to actually relieve themselves from relegation trouble. Leeds just by hair hanging in there, and we will see that yeah, Burnley also may save themselves, may not save themselves. It's a little bit hard to call at this very moment, although one definitely has to worry about Leeds. But where I want to start, and it's not very chronologically, but I think it makes sense. The biggest uh, thing was, of course, the FA Cup final, where I cleared my whole schedule for. Um, I expected an exciting game uh, because all the other Liverpool Chelsea games this season were really, really exciting. However, it did not deliver. It was a rather timid, uh, dare I say, boring game. Uh, it was very much stalemate. Yes, in the first 20, 20 minutes, I really thought that Liverpool are going to eat Chelsea alive. Uh, Chelsea, I did want to say it uh, the last time around, I really expected Chelsea to play in yellow because seemingly this is what they have decided now are the, are the lucky jerseys. In the third consecutive FA Cup final, have, uh, losing two in a row. Uh, I really would have liked Chelsea to play in blue, but okay, yellow it is. Uh, it doesn't, it's not often that you see a um, red versus yellow matchup anyway, so I'm fine with that. So first 20 minutes went to Liverpool, but I think then uh, Chelsea got it sorted. And I think Pulisic missed a few, a couple of chances. I think Alonso hit once the post, but then I think Liverpool also in the second half, twice the post. But these were the few highlights in between. It was, uh, it was not a match that was edge of your seat material. Uh, it would, uh, you were, it lived more from the suspense. Is there something going to happen than there, there actually being something happening? Um, one might say that Chelsea maybe then in overtime played more for uh, the penalty shooter, but I also had the feeling um, that Chelsea were a little bit more cohesive in overtime. But, you know, not necessarily the better team. There was really nothing to separate these two teams. And it's uh, an FA Cup final that I would love to talk a whole lot more about. We can talk a lot about the shootout. Um, that Liverpool in the end wins. 
uh, with Chelsea holding the advantage by going first. Uh, it was this time the shootout, like the last time in the league cup final, it was uh, in front of the Liverpool end, now it was in front of the Chelsea end, uh, which is not an advantage, to be honest. I think research has shown that if you have a shootout in front of your own fans, you're more likely to lose than win because the pressure becomes even ramped up. Yes, um, you may have the support, but on the, on the other side, uh, it's the attitude, yeah, I gotta win now. And so, yeah, uh, was, that was a little bit weird. Uh, but it has to be said that um, even the Aspilicueta penalty that gets against the post, Chelsea had largely really, really good penalty was taken. Or... I really feel that all the penalties were quite uh, well well taken. And then it come even Jorginho uh, puts it home. It was also, I think, uh, remarkable that the first three Chelsea penalties were all uh, defenders, which is something that you don't see very, very often. Uh, I really like the sixth penalty by Hakim Ziyech, but uh, by that point, you know, Jorginho kept Chelsea in play. And then Manet steps up and uh, takes the first uh, penal and takes a penalty against his national team teammate um, and of course I think Klopp told him go on the other side that he usually go back here because he knows that you know and so on and uh, blah 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 and then I seemingly rattled Mane enough and so a penalty sh 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 where you really thought that Liverpool had already won it in the last penalty uh, it is saved and uh, it goes Further, and I really thought that now the advantage is with Chelsea. Uh, it was not to be because Mason Mount uh, sees his penalty saved uh, and Timikas uh, slots it home. There were a few things I think um, for both penalties that they have never missed, and I have not rewatched it, but I, I noticed for both penalties that, that um, uh, Chelsea missed, Allison clapped. In the, uh, during, during the round -up. If that has anything to do with it, I don't know. We know now that Klopp has hired an agency that helped him in the penalty shoot, shoot, shoot with some neuro, new, uh, neuro stuff. I think it was also the things, I mean, both teams now knew that, um, you know, you take the penalty when you take your penalty. Even if the referee whistles, you can take your time to compose yourself. And you could really see this. Maybe Mane was the one that would hold in, do that. And the other thing is, that in order to um, get all these um, mind games out of the play, there was always Alisson there, handing the Liverpool player the ball, kind of preventing any uh, back and forth. So I found that in 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 interesting. Of course, with Simikas, there's an unlikely cup final hero and Liverpool win a cup final. I think in this case you cannot dis say that uh, one team deserved it over another. It was just uh, a winner needed to be found and it ended up being Liverpool who have now the cup double which is also already a big achievement. However, the two bigger prizes are still to play for and it's very likely that Liverpool uh, end up with, at with three titles. As I said, the fourth one I don't quite see but um, we We'll see <laughs> on Sunday how uh, things went. Um, so that's my FA Cup final coverage. I really would have loved to talk more, but honestly, there wasn't much to talk about. So uh, we rather go to the Premier League where we start with the makeup games from the 10th of May. Yes, this is over, over, over a week ago where... Um, Aston Villa gave Liverpool actually a hard time. Liverpool, of course, saving the place. You know, uh, Liverpool and Chelsea had to play earlier because of the FA Cup 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 final, and it's rather squeezing in the games. Uh, Luis actually gave Aston Villa an early lead, but then Matip uh, quickly equalized, and then Sadio Mane uh, gets a winner. So hard, uh, hard fought win for Liverpool, but staying in the title race, and at that point, even pu uh, pushing Manchester City a little bit, who needed to get the win. Um, Leeds United, again, are their own worst enemies. Yes, they found themselves already down against Mason Mount and Chelsea having overall a pretty good performance. Uh, but what was David James doing in the 24th minute? I mean, uh, such a rash tackle. It seems to me, uh, we, we call in German, over-motivation. The way he went in, in, in his tank is not, a good, is not a good way. And this is the way. Now, they did it already against Arsenal. Now they did it against Chelsea. Leeds are really, really hurt, hurt, hurting themselves and really, really hurting the chances to actually uh, go forward, uh, uh, staying up in many, in many ways. And from that moment on, it was rather easy for Chelsea to go through uh, with Pulisic and uh, Lukaku score. 
Yes, Lukaku has been scoring. He has been playing now. Seemingly, Lukaku is back in the business. 3-0 uh, win for Chelsea. A Chelsea team who, of course, there are still uh, big questions uh, looming over the takeover. Uh, is it not going through? Uh, what will be the parameters? I My short statement on it is, I think... We will see from now on a different Chelsea, maybe slightly differently going. There will still be money, uh, but I don't think it will be the free spending that they had to do previously. So it will be, I think it will be more emphasis put on recruitment uh, than going out for the big stars as they, have, they used to be. So in that sense, an end of an era, but let's see. I think Chelsea, at least until under Bromwich, uh, you always had the feeling that they might actually be able to spend themselves up to join the other two. It might be that they fall a little bit down to the London rivals and Manchester United, but uh, you know, all still in the air. As I said, Liverpool put pressure on Manchester City and Manchester City responded. De Bruyne are uh, having an absolute pijo of a game, scoring four, uh, four in a row, um, only um, broken by the Donka equalizer, but this was really De Bruyne gives them the early lead, then Donker gets the equal, and you really think maybe Wolves can get a point and make it a title race. No, in the 16th, so this was uh, within 15 minutes, uh, they had, um, it was 2 1, so uh, 7, 11, 16, and then it was just going one way and Manchester United completely destroying Wolves, uh, which was probably one of the trickier fixtures left on their scale. Not the trickiest one because that was definitely on the, on the weekend. Also doing a whole lot for their goal difference, uh, which they now completely dom dominated. This was a month ago. Liverpool had the better goal difference, uh, which is of course the first tiebreak in England. Say it was what you may. But uh, that now is firmly in City's hands and it will be really, really hard for um, Liverpool to win the title if it's even, but I don't think we will get even points uh, at this point. So yeah, City taking the league, uh, the lead in the league again. Uh, we had another one um, where Everton do not win at Watford. A win, I think, would have uh, put them safe, and so they are still hanging kind of around. This was really a, a, a game where I expected them to win. Uh, Leicester 3-0 uh, over uh, Norwich, so um, they also kind of moving a little bit uh, more up, but you know, more than a midfield uh, spot will uh, not be happening there. Um, and then it was all about Spurs against Arsenal. And it was, I think, a really, really, really good game. However, also marred by refereeing decisions, to be honest. I really felt it was a little bit... Um, Arsenal have a right to feel hard done by, although the referee, while uh, not maybe playing by uh, Premier League standards, all the decisions that he made can be seen as correct. But I still feel, given that we are in the Premier League, that, prim that especially the penalty call was a little easy uh, the way uh, I, th I, I think it was holding and who else who kind of shoved uh, Son to the ground. Yes, it's a penalty because he's standing there. But I've seen that so often in the, pe in, in the Premier League it was not given. Heck, I've seen it in uh, Serie A, especially with Milan, where players are shoved down and no one cares about it. So for me, that's why this was a little bit of soft penalty, but Kane converting that one. And at that point, Spurs def desperately needed it because Arsenal had a four-point lead on them. Spurs desperately needed that, that they win to stay in the race for the top four. Uh, and then Arsenal shoot themselves in the, in the foot with Rob Holding, getting two yellows in short period of time. And the one uh, where he again with Son elbows him uh, while Son is running on goal and probably even unnecessarily so in many ways. And with that red card, it was clear that Spurs are going to win this game. That it became then really ugly is probably every Spurs fan's dream, uh, I got to say. Uh, I have to say that Arteta, after the game, yes, he had a right to say that he was not happy with the refereeing. But on the other side, I also have to say that I think he has to look at his Arsenal squad, how they uh, dealt with this uh, game. Spurs then, as soon as it was 10 uh, uh, down to 10, men were the abs abs absolute better uh, team. Uh, Kane with a flying head and then especially right after have some making 3-0 uh, cruising. Absolutely cruising, and as I said, Spurs uh, fans are definitely happy with that one. That gave them a shot to uh, put pressure on Arsenal, uh, and it got even so. And as I said, at this point, 
they are within one point of ours. Also, and City are three points ahead of Liverpool. So, uh, which maybe is meant if, if City would have won at the weekend with a better goal, goal difference, that win more or less would have sealed the title. And on, on the bottom, um, Leeds really looking raw with 34 points, Burnley 34 and Everton 36. It, all still not quite safe, but uh, things pointing strongly towards Leeds. Uh, then on the weekend, uh, Spurs get a lucky win over Burnley with another rather softish penalty late in the second half. However, a win they get. And at that point, they're ahead of Arsenal. Um, Leeds United, very remarkably, uh, were on the losing end. And then in the 90th minute, uh, or in the stoppage time, Stroik gets an equalizer. An equalizer that could pay dividends down the road because uh, everything else fell in their way. Because um, Everton managed to, in, in, in the late game, lose to Brentford at home despite being 1-0 and 2-1 uh, up, but, you know, uh, getting two stupid red cards. Everton would really have done something for uh, if they get a result against Brentford, but now losing them, uh, the, the specter of relegation is still hovering around. However, the game of the weekend definitely was West Ham against Manchester City. Uh, and boy, what a game it was the last... Um, uh, a send off uh, for Mark Noble. I just have to recall a call, call name. And uh, Jared Bowen really establishing himself as probably the second best uh, player on the West Ham squad by scoring two wonderful goals. Uh, and both where they caught out the matches, the ball came from Fab, Fab the Fabianski, and then very quickly moved into the path of Bowen, where. Um, uh, where the Man City defense was always unsolved, I'm sorry, I think it was about twice Laporte who was not in position, and twice Bowen then had enough composure to put the ball home. And I think for the second goal where he then runs around uh, the way, I think it went to the legs or something, he, he could have put the ball better in that case. Uh, and it's 2-0 at the half, every Liverpool fan's dream, to be honest. However, I have to say, even if Manchester City would have lost, thanks to the superior goal difference, it is still, was still a hard task because Liverpool then needed to win out and again, a win for City probably would seal the title right there and then unless you do something about the goal dif the difference. However, I also have to say, even despite the 2-0 lead for West Ham at the half, I really thought the say, uh, at, 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 if City get a quick goal, they're going to win this one. This is a typical game that City uh, will win. And sure enough, Grealish for the ninth minute makes it 2-1. Uh, uh, and then uh, Zufall own goal, uh, absolute uh, horror. I mean, he wants to clear it and puts it in, in his net. Make, 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 makes 2-2. Uh, in the meantime, I think um, Mikel Antonio had a great chance. And uh, there were really two good chances falling to West Ham as, as well to make it 3-1, which probably would have sealed the game for West Ham. However, then there's a late penalty. And to be honest, an absolutely deserved penalty. The more I look at it, the more it was a penalty. And Riyad Mahrez steps up and finds his uh, spot kick saved. It was, I think, a, it was a much better save than it was a bad shot by Riyad Mahrez, although, you know, a little bit high, but he really tried to pull it high uh, and could have gone a bit more towards the corner, uh, but it was saved by Far Far Hopianski. So it's 2-2 and Manchester City drop points against West Ham. However, Liverpool lost at West Ham as far as I remember. And so that kind of kept the title race hovering around. And then on Monday and Tuesday to finish out the round, there were two huge results. Uh, Newcastle, and have you seen the new uh, touted away jerseys, the Saudi Arabia kits? Horrible. Horrible. Arsenal do not show up. And Newcastle win it 2-0 uh, through a Ben White on goal and lay, lay down to Bruno Guimaraes, uh, but this was never really in doubt. Uh, this is such an indictment on Arsenal, because if you would have thought that one of these two teams is playing for the Champions League, you would have thought it is Newcastle, and it might as well be Newcastle next season. I mean, uh, this is one uh, thing that I think for Spurs, Arsenal and Manchester United, Newcastle might well already be a power come next year. It might take two years, to be honest, but uh, they might be a team that might challenge already for Champions League rather, rather soon. So this is kind of your window, especially for Arsenal, who is still building. 
because Spurs uh, threw away a good chunk of the season by uh, not hiring Conte from uh, the beginning of the season, to be honest. So uh, that is something where Arsenal really might rule. This, was, this could have well been the one chance where United throw away everything, where uh, you have Spurs throwing away a good chunk of their season and Arsenal was really looking strong and they could have gotten Champions League. And it might be that the way everything is developing, yes, Chelsea will probably come down, but I actually actually feel in the upcoming season it might get harder for Arsenal to get in, in, into the Champions League. Unless Arteta really turns out to be the promising young coach that everyone makes him out to be. I think the judgment is still out for that, but it, I also think that Arsenal is building something. But I still think of all the three squads of the Champions League teams, I'm, I would have said it's United, Spurs and Arsenal in that order. So this was a huge chance for Arsenal thrown away right there and then. And then yesterday, and I think uh, with Manchester City um, only drawing, Liverpool decided yeah, make nine changes from the FA Cup. And that's exactly what, what happened. Uh, Southampton get a one nil lead uh, uh, through Redmond, but Minamino 27th equalizes with a really nice goal. And then Joel Matip wins it in the 67th for Liverpool to stay in this title race. And so after all these games we have now, the, for the uh, last standings that I will show you, uh, yes, there is a midweek round. Spurs now ahead of Arsenal and firmly in control of their own destiny. They just need to win and we will see it's a very winnable game. Uh, we have on top, it's 78-22, uh, so 80-20 roughly for Manchester City. Uh, Liverpool need to hope that Manchester City for some reason drop points and Liverpool win. Um, I think if it goes that City, City lose and Liverpool uh, draw, is. It's obvious it will not not be enough, and I don't see Manchester City losing a lot at home. So yeah, uh, it, we all we, as as we see on the bottom. I said Everton kind. It's deceivingly safe. They have a game in midweek. They desperately need to get at least a point out of that one, and hope that Burnley doesn't do any anything in midweek. But at the moment, it's Leeds United, and uh, it's still not quite yeah. It's it's rough, as, 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 as we see. Burn at the moment is down, but they have one game less than Leeds, Leeds United, so never discount that fact. So, uh, rather, rather interesting stuff going on. So, we talk about midweek. Uh, tomorrow night, Everton against Crystal Palace. Everton win, they're safe. It's that simple. This is all that it's about. And that's the game. I mean, a point may, may be enough, but better win it. If you win it, you're done. And Crystal Palace do not have much to play for. By the way, the last, the last time I called Crystal Palace might get implicated. Yes, I forgot two, uh, two results in the table there. Uh, to, yeah, this is uh, completely my... I missed uh, w no, I'm, I missed one result that was a mid mid video game. So it always seemed to me that Crystal Palace are more dangerous than they, uh, in danger than they are. So mea culpa there. Um, we have also on Thursday Aston Villa against Burnley. So Aston Villa has a lot to play. Uh, you know, they played just against uh, Liverpool. Now they play against Burnley. They can decide the relegation. If Aston Villa should win that, their last home home game. This will also play a huge dividends to Leeds United. So that's the prelude, kind of. I think if uh, Burnley will win this one, they will save uh, a draw. They will, they will put them level with Leeds, but then Leeds and Leeds have the worst goal difference. So. Yeah, uh, any point that Burn that the Burn get will be good for them. Uh, we also have Chelsea Leicester City, which would be a fun match, match but it has nothing to do anymore. And then we have the last round, all played, and I, I ruled it. It makes total sense. That it's Sunday at uh, five European time, four uh, London time. I'd rather have it on sa on Saturday, to be honest, uh, which would be the tra traditional spot because now it is overlapping with the Serie A title race. And so I have already already said I may record this, but my focus will be on the Serie A title race. That much is for sure. Um, but there's a lot to play for. Um, let's start. Everton have to play at Arsenal. If they're already safe, that's fine. If they have to get something, Arsenal may still have something to play for, but given how it's going, I think Everton actually could get something of our Arsenal. Brentford leads. Brentford just beat uh, Everton, so I guess they can do leads as well. Um, Burnley at home to Newcastle. Don't think this is an easy win. 
I don't think it's easy. I think New, New, Newcastle is out to prove something. And then of course for the title decider we have Liverpool against Wolves and uh, at home and Manchester City at home to Aston Villa. So two Midlands uh, teams. And then it ends, the last one is of course Norwich against Spurs. Uh, Spurs could not have wished for an easy opponent. Uh, the only thing is that it's the last game for Norwich at home, but uh, in the Premier League, for now, uh, they might come back in, uh, in, uh, from the Championship uh, next season. So uh, let's see. But it really seems very winnable for Spurs. And I think uh, even a draw should be enough for Spurs. Yeah, they have two. A draw is enough because there's a superior goal difference. So uh, it seems very, very unlikely that Arsenal will get some, something where I could very well see that this is competitive Arsenal, Everton at the beginning, then Spurs take a 2 nil lead and Arsenal know that they cannot do anything and then Everton probably can pull away with that one. So that's just one scenario. Another fun scenario, and um, I know it's a very long video and then I'm going to end it here, is that um, it did not happen. Because Southampton hasn't lost 9-0 this season. I actually thought if Liverpool would have filled a uh, full squad and done something about, about goal difference, maybe Southampton could have gotten another 9-0. And that would have leveled things up again. But in any case. Please let me know how you think, uh, the, how things will go down the wire. Um, any comments, of course, welcome. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell, so in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.